Hey guys, Jason here. Welcome back to the channel. I'm doing a book review today. Talking about The Trouble with Peace by Joe Abercrombie. So today is uh, the 14th of September, Tuesday. Uh, Wisdom of Crowds came out today. I just picked up my copy, haven't started reading it yet, but I wanted to get this review out before, I guess, I started reading. This is the second book in the Age of Madness trilogy. It's set in the First Law universe, so it takes place, you know, 30 or so years after the events of the original First Law trilogy. Yeah, it's... Oh my god, this book is so, so, so freaking good. Every book in this series that comes out, every time Joe Abercrombie puts out a new book, it's better than the one before it. Like, his writing has just gotten so, so good, and, like, the, uh, it's just... It's incredible. Like, the characters are incredible. The... The plotting, uh, you know, that was one of the things that was maybe weaker in some of his earlier books, especially like The Blade itself didn't really have a plot that much. Um, but his plots have gotten so like intricate and interwoven. It's just, they're so freaking good. But I loved this book. Loved it. This is going to be a hard book to talk about without spoiling at least some things from A Little Hatred and also, you know, previous books in the series. So just be forewarned if you haven't read up to this point. Um, you'll probably hear some things um, about characters and you'll be like, oh, I guess that guy must still be alive. Or So just be forewarned, spoilers for the rest of the series leading up to this. But I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free for this particular entry as possible. And like I said, I have not started Wisdom of Crowds yet, so this is where I'm at. If you haven't watched my A Little Hatred video, I'll post it up here. You can check that out. Um, but this book is just a direct continuation of that. It's, uh, I mean, it maybe takes place like a couple months after the end of that book, but not, not much. Savine is, you know, got PTSD from her time in Volbeck. Um, Leo is pissed because he's back in England and, uh, the Union is like taxing them heavily. Didn't really support their war efforts, um, and didn't help them out when they were in, in need, and now demanding all these, like, high taxes and stuff. So Leo is upset about that. Anyway, Stour and his crew up north are planning and plotting. He's kind of beholden to, or, like, allied with Leo in a weird way, but, like, I don't trust him with that at all. Um, and then Ricky is, you know, she's still... Got her visions and things. Orso is now king of the Union. Uh, Jazal, his father, died, so now he's king. He never really wanted to be or whatever. He knew he would eventually, but I don't I don't think he was ready for it. Um, anyway, so that's kind of where they're all at in the beginning of this story. And then what this book is about, it's basically like there's this, cons there's this grand conspiracy with the Open Council and the Closed Council and... Uh, various other people like side characters and things that are conspiring against the crown to try to overthrow the government basically they don't think that uh, orso is doing a good job they don't think that the bureaucracy is serving uh, their interests so they want to um, topple the government and, and institute uh, a, a totally new set of of ruling class people so you've got these close council members that are plotting here, and they kind of co-opt Leo into their plans. And, oh, I forgot to mention, Savine is pregnant with Leo's baby uh, at the beginning of this story. You find that out. And so um, they get married. So when Leo's doing all this plotting and stuff against um, against the crown, it kind of... It kind of automatically wraps up Savine into his plans. She doesn't really have any options. She can't give up her husband uh, because, and she also can't pretend like she doesn't know what's going on because it would like implicate her. Um, so she, so she helps. She's like, what can I get out of this? If, if we are able to do this, maybe we can put Leo as king. Maybe I can be queen, blah, 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 blah. So she starts scheming and plotting, and she and she does her best to try to like weigh the the odds in the rebellion's favor. It's just crazy. There's massive battles. There's double crossing. There's all this stuff going on. It's just oh god, it's so good. And as you can imagine, things don't go according to plan for either side really. Um, but uh, that's pretty much all I'll say. I'm I you should absolutely read this book. The way that it ends. Oh my god. 
it was it was like kind of a cliffhanger but it was also like these all these characters just came came crashing down into like their lowest points and man i just i've I, I finished this book maybe i don't know a month and a half ago or something like that and i've just been counting the days until wisdom of crowds comes out so it just came out i just got my copy i'm gonna finish this this review real quick and then i'm gonna go start reading it because i just can't wait so yeah five out of five absolutely fantastic book i cannot wait to read the conclusion so uh let me know what you guys think if you're as excited as i am for wisdom of crowds if you read this book if you haven't go read go read the first law like drop whatever you're doing and go do it quit your job and go read the first law it's it's so good. Yeah, Jesus. Anyway, I'm going to go read some more First Law. So with that, I'll leave you guys. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.